know what you're thinking. Winnie the Pooh. I am so cool. Right, so if you've followed the channel for a while, you'll know that I tend to use a MacBook Pro for my main laptop device due to mainly editing these videos, I use Final Cut Pro. However, if this wasn't the case, I'd be more than happy to dabble in the Windows arena for anything other than the light gaming admin browsing that I do currently. I'm also well aware that a lot of you will use Adobe Premiere Pro, for example, for your video editing, or you won't video edit at all, which sometimes a lot of reviewers seem to forget. MacBook Pros are very popular, but if you're looking for an alternative and you're looking for something that is running Windows, then the brand new Huawei MateBook 16 might just be the perfect ticket. Like the video if you enjoy it, sub if you're new and enjoy this sort of content, and I apologize for my voice because uh, I've been pretty under the weather, I'm not gonna lie, uh, but I'll battle on. So you can't get away from the fact from a design point of view, the Huawei MateBook 16 does hold certain resemblances to the MacBook Pro series. There's definite visible inspiration here when you pair them side by side. However, not only is that not a bad thing in my opinion, because the MacBooks are really popular, partly due to the design, but also I think in some areas, the MateBook 16 even goes that one step further. There are some drawbacks of course also, which I'll mention. So you have this similar space gray and black keyboard combination going on with speakers either side and a large trackpad underneath. I'm still searching and I've been searching for quite a few years now for a Windows laptop which which just whose trackpad whose trackpad is quite able to reproduce the quality of the MacBook Pros. But the MateBook 16 runs it very close indeed, and it's certainly one of the best on the Windows platform. There is just that tiny little bit of extra movement here, which makes it feel slightly less firm and less robust, but I'm splitting hairs here. Very similar amount of travel on the keys and volume two when typing. I mean, the only real difference to the untrained naked eye between the two is the digital touch bar on my 2019 MacBook Pro, which actually isn't even there on the latest models anyway, the variation on the arrow keys and the power button placements that double as fingerprint scanners. Spellbindingly quick, I might add, on this MateBook 16. You tap the button to turn it on and it just registers straight away. I love the ceramic blasted finish and angular, highly reflective almost chrome-like edges, very aggressive looking, and the hinge is lovely and firm with very minimal wobble. And this is always a huge selling point for me, the one hand open test, bam. Now one thing I'm not a massive fan of is the selection of ports on the sides, and not necessarily what we've got, but where they're positioned. So you do have two USB type C ports, an HDMI and headphone jack on one side and two USB type A's on the other. So not terrible in terms of options, although you would have to use a dongle for things like an SD card or an ethernet port, for example, but I can't for the life of me work out why we have two USB type C's on one side and none on the other when they combine as power charging ports as well. In my opinion, there's nothing worse than having to reach a cable around the back of a laptop when you can just plug it in on the side. It's just incredibly messy for, for no reason. I would love nothing more than just to be able to pop it in that side so that I don't have, but instead I've got to go right the way around the back. <coughs> I told you I wasn't 100% just to plug it in over there. So now I've got this kind of bending around the back. If you are looking to charge, we have the Huawei 135 watt fast charger, which apparently gives you around three and a half hours use on just 15 minutes charge, which is great. And if your MateBook 16 is fully charged, you should have around 12.5 hours of video playback 
at 1080p, for example. Though, again, if you're going to be high-end gaming or video editing, photo editing, for example, then they are going to be more power intensive, be more draining on your battery as always. Underneath, you can see the base vent here, which houses large dual fans composed of 79 ultra slim S-shaped shark fin blades, helping to dissipate heat via two extra wide heat pipes. And I can tell you, even under pretty heavy load, this thing is really nice and quiet. It's not fanless, so it's not silent, but again, just comparing, I know it's a, an older version, but my 2019 MacBook Pro is, is a bit of a steam train. You also have your rubber feet strips here and here to keep the laptop secure on your surfaces, hinge air in it here, and just the Huawei text on the lid. Larger than on previous and slightly dirty now looking Huawei laptops, but still nothing too garish. I personally would like to see them have the uh, actual Huawei logo, so not necessarily the text, the, what is it? It's not a flower, is it? This one would look pretty smart here, but that text does match the one on the front underneath the display. And while we're on the display, this screen is absolutely gorgeous. A 16 inch 2.5K full view display with a 90% screen to body ratio, over 1 billion colors, a 100% sRGB color gamut, contrast ratio of 1500 to one, and it's the world's first Tuv Rhineland color accuracy laptop. We have ultra slim bezels all around, which looks absolutely stunning. And this is possible because the webcam is housed in this pop-up key. Now this piece of tech isn't new. We've seen it on a lot of Huawei and Honor devices before. It does divide opinion. Uh, you either like it or you hate it. It's cool. It's great for privacy. So your camera is not always on show, but if you are using it for a video call, Zoom, Microsoft Teams chat, etc., then it is going to go shoot straight up your nose. So it's not the best angle. It's going to give you jowls, um, especially during post lockdown. We've probably got a little bit of extra baggage under here, and it's not great. If you don't do a lot of video calls, then it does give you this whole beautiful display, which is great. Very slim bezels. Um, and also, you can attach your own personal webcam like I would use. I've got a 4K one, but I appreciate that not everyone is in that boat. So this may be key for you. It may not be key for you. Keyboard key. <laughs> now also along those lines, we have aspect ratio. This is a three by two. And again, this will divide opinion depending on what you use your laptop for. Many laptops are 16 by nine, the sort of present TV and film norm, great for media consumption and gaming, but not so great for multitasking, photo and video editing, etc. And some, like this MacBook Pro, are 16 by 10, offering slightly more headroom for those creative tasks. But this MacBook 16 is three by two, which just gives even more screen real estate, and I absolutely love it. This extra space gives you so much more room to play around with, so a whole host of creative tasks are possible, and if you can get used to the black bars top and bottom, which you will get on 16x9 content, movies, etc., then this works for pretty much everything. You don't have to be just doing creative tasks. It could be multitasking, browsing and having emails open and, and also watching small form video content as well. And like I said, because there's more space, you can do more things. I personally don't get the hate with having black bars top and bottom because at the end of the day, it's still wide enough to fit the same size content of movie, for example. But when you're not watching that movie, you have more screen. So yeah, I personally would go with this probably, um, again, you might not. Now there's a really nice weight and chunk to the MateBook 16, which gives you that optimism that there's more to this than just looking nice. But is that optimism justified? What is the performance like? <coughs> My throat performance is poor. <coughs> Well, inside we have the all new custom AMD Ryzen 7, 5800H, seven nanometer chipset. And it's pretty beefy indeed, as seen on the Cinebench and Geekbench scores. 54 watt, eight core, 16 thread Radeon graphics with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. Long gaming sessions are possible, as are some moderate to advanced 4K multi-layered video editing, basic 3D animation and design tasks. 
It's not the highest end Ryzen 9 series, but it's significantly more powerful than Ryzen 5s and Ryzen 3s. You may also be pleased to know you can have multiple browser tabs open at once. Something again that comments would suggest always gets missed on laptop reviews. You ask, I give you. I can't say fairer than that. <laughs> now you do have Windows 11 running on this out of the box, and it comes with a whole host of juicy upgrades. The start menu has shifted to the middle, the search icon is available straight away, gone other tiles for that clean and crisp look, and there's also this really helpful new recommended uh, feature down here, showcasing suggested apps based on what you've recently used. Animations have been revamped with a new bouncy sequence, and everything right through the UI has a rounder appearance from the sharp boxy look of Windows 10, following on from what Google did with Android and Apple did with iOS and macOS. I for one, prefer it. Lock screens are new, sounds are different, and amongst many other handy tweaks, Windows 11 seems to work better with touchscreen capabilities, but I can't I can't showcase that because this doesn't have a touchscreen. Not important for some of you, but you need to know because you might want a two-in-one. Not sure what that song was, but uh, it'll be in the charts next week. So this all sounds great. But Huawei have an additional trick up their sleeve. Something that I mentioned in my P50 Pro video that I did the other week. And definitely watch that video for more in-depth analysis of this and the changes behind the scenes that Huawei are developing for their smartphones. But this part in question is the idea of a super device. Now the super device is all about communication between all of your Huawei devices, facilitating seamless cross-device collaboration, allowing a vast array of smart devices to function as one cohesive unit. So a lot of waffly words, but the key takeaways are this ecosystem that they're currently building could be, and could is the optimum word here because I haven't tested it, it could be incredibly exciting. To form this super device, apparently you open the control center on your laptop, access the super device screen, and drag certain devices to connect them. You can search for files cross-platform to locate them and get notifications and reminders on all connected devices amongst other things. They are some of the implied features. I would be very excited to pair this new MateBook 16 with their MateStation. They're to compete with the likes of the iMacs, MateBook E, P50 Pro, etc. It all looks very promising. So is this Huawei MateBook 16 a MacBook Pro killer? Well, that all depends on how important software and apps are, what you use, how invested you are. Are you a Windows-based user? Are you macOS, for example? If you're not sure, you don't mind, or you are a Windows user, then this is a fantastic option right now. Of course, as always, in the comments, I'm open to hearing how I've just waffled for 10 minutes without giving any useful information. So do critique it below. Let me know what I should have included in the review, what I missed off, what you liked, and what you like about this product as well. Like I said, make sure you watch the video on the P50 Pro and what Huawei are doing behind the scenes to do with their smartphones uh, here. And also check out a whole host of other videos on the channel. If you're interested and new, subscribe so you don't miss when I next post. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for all of the latest tech updates and just a bit of chat banter. I love you, Levy. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.